Hello and welcome to Group 23's ECNG 3022 Antenna Analysis and Design. More specifically, a PIFA Antenna Design for the IEEE 802.11AF for use in the mobile handset. So our research question is, is pretty simple. Um, we are asking what are the geometrical and electromagnetic properties to be considered when designing a planar inverted F antenna for the transmission and reception within the UHF VHF TV bands while following the IEEE 802.22 and the 802.11AF specifications all within the constraints of operating within a mobile device. So to bring that a little closer, the IEEE 802.11AF and the 802.22 wireless standards, both are wireless standards that allow for the wide area networking uh, of devices, machine-to-machine uh, -machine devices, by using the television wide space spectrum. Uh, that's the VHF and the UHF bands. So both, while utilizing cognitive radio strategies for transmission and reception, uh, they both use unused wide space frequencies in the band, TV wide space band, and they both um, sharing the spectrum by um, using uh, some geolocation database uh, whose operation is mandated by a regulatory authority. And the planar inverted F antenna is what we are supposed to design. Uh, and on the left picture you'll see a very basic diagram of how it looks um, from one angle. It's simply a microstrip antenna uh, on the top and there's a substrate in the middle and the ground plane at the bottom and there's a, a small shorting pin that connects the ground plane uh, to the patch antenna to the top. So in calculating the uh, dimensions we have a initial specification of 25.5 millimeters length and width with a height of 8 millimeters and a shorting pin width of 10 millimeters. We use copper for the antenna, FR4 for the substrate. Uh, the feeder was coaxial and the ground plane was also copper as well, as well as the shorting pin. This was our first antenna design using CST Studio Suite. Uh, the diagram on the left shows uh, it's a simple PIFA antenna with a wide shorting pin and a feeder probe going from the ground plane to the antenna. The result, however, from the first antenna showed that we have two resonant frequencies, one around 1400 and the other one around 1800 MHz. This is our second iteration in the PIFA design in trying to attain a resonant frequency of 710 MHz. As you can see, um, we widened the ground plane as well as increased the size of the uh, antenna itself. Um, everything remained the same um, and uh, the results that we got was that um, the frequency, um, we have one resonant frequency at close to 1600 megahertz. So in further iterating design, in further iterating the design, we added a backplate um, as you can see here to the PIFA antenna and joined it to the top part of the PIFA antenna so as to lower the resonating frequency at which we would like to operate on. I've also added an FR4 substrate uh, right under the um, top antenna. On attaining the resonant frequency of 710 MHz we then took the antenna and modeled it uh, right next to a human head so that we can calculate the S parameters, um, the specific absorption rate, um, which is how many uh, of the waves is absorbed by the human tissue and is it or is it not harmful as dictated by some RF safety standards. In performing the SAR analysis, we did two SAR analysis. One was for the watts per kilogram per 10 gram skin tissue ratio and the other was for a 1 gram tissue ratio and from the results we acquired some pretty good um, SAR results 
uh, just a good bit on the the 1.6 watts per kilogram uh, that's dictated by the FCC for United States of America. In conclusion, we have successfully designed a PFA antenna that operates within sufficient transmission and receptive power within the VHF band, as specified by the 802.11EF and 802.22 standards. The antenna also performed within the safety limits uh, for the specific absorption rate. Thank you.